Welcome to RPV City Talk. RPV City Talk is brought to you by the City of Rancho Palos Verdes to inform the community on recent city matters. RPV City Talk is a weekly show that features the RPV Mayor, City Council, or City Employees. Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to RPV City Talk. Today I'm here at the Lameda Sheriff Station and we will be talking with Captain Blaine Bolin. It's great to be here with you and Happy Thank New you, Year. Liz. Happy New Year to you. <laughs> um, let's just start off just by just kind of giving an overview to our residents on the Hill about what's happening with crime um, on the peninsula, um, just some statistics you might want to share, and just sort of the trends we're seeing. Sure. Uh, well, we're very pleased. We uh, finished 2012 uh, with a decrease in crime in many of the key areas. Uh, Rancho Palos Verdes in our Part 1 crimes, which are our serious high-grade felonies, assaults, burglaries, thefts, grand theft autos, and, and the like, we were down 8% from 2011. Our burglaries were down 7%. Our Grand Theft Autos were down 10%. Uh, Rolling Hills Estates showed even uh, a bigger deficit, 20% uh, in burglaries and 25% in GTAs. Right now, though, in 2013, we've had 29 burglaries to date. What's going on? Well, you know, we, and we've taken a look at that, and, and you know, some interesting things have come out of our assessment. Uh, we've, of those 29, none were on Sunday, five were on Saturday, the rest were during the week. So, and that's consistent with crime on the peninsula, it's usually Monday through Fridays. Folks, are, you know, kids are at school, folks are working, homes are uh, um, empty. And uh, what we've noticed, too, uh, is six of the homes burglarized in 2013 were either being remodeled or under some sort of construction. And right. a few of the burglaries, there was no loss that was reported at the time the uh, burglary report was taken. It's just folks come home and believe someone had made an entry, a door was, or a window was open, door was left unlocked. And uh, so there, beyond that, there's really no crime pattern that we can point to at this point, but we're still looking at it. And we do have, with a couple of the burglaries, information that we're working, that we're hopeful will help us uh, lead to a, uh, a resolution. Resolution being an arrest, recovery right. of property, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. I know you just had a resolution in a case just recently in RPV where you had an, an armed um, a, a burglar came in and you were able to solve that? Yes, we, um, that, we classified that as a home invasion okay. robbery where an intruder came in with a firearm and then uh, there was, uh, he confronted a uh, woman, lone woman in her home and uh, ended up robbing her of uh, jewelry and other items, forced her into a, uh, a closet and he ended up taking a, a uh, cell phone and some other things and then util utilizing advanced technology that our detectives have, we were able to track this suspect down into another city outside our jurisdiction and he was ultimately arrested. When you reference back to 2012, again, you saw that there was a decline in, in, in crime overall. Mm -hmm. Great news, but um, is there any way to figure out why that was? Just like you said, there's really no rhyme or reason to the pattern. When you see a spike right now, how do you figure out like what you're doing right that's, that's helping to bring this decrease in crime? Well, I, I tell you, <laughs> it was a, uh, it, essentially it was a joint effort because we were, uh, you know, we took a look at uh, why has crime spiked and you know, we own this crime and it's our responsibility to address it and to correct it. And so we looked at um, you know, everything that we could from every angle. Conceivably, uh, the city of Rancho Palos Verdes was very supportive as they've always been and they were able to uh, supplement the budget and we were able to uh, you know, put deputies out on bicycles, uh, our thriving neighborhood watch. Mm -hmm. uh, led by Gail Lorenzen and all of our block captains, you know, keeping them educated and informed on trends, and then they in turn reporting suspicious activity to us. Our patrol deputies being diligent, our investigators being aggressive, and put all that together, and we were able to make some significant arrests, which put a, uh, a damper on uh, uh, right. some of the, the crimes that, particularly the property crime, on the peninsula. Yeah, I have to say Neighborhood Watch, I live in Seaview, and mm -hmm. some of the incidents, uh, in fact, uh, the situation where uh, it's a friend of mine who's having their house remodeled that was broken into, mm -hmm. so, but it just keeps reminding you, I think, when you, you stay, you have, to, you have to be diligent as a resident, and you have to, you have to pay attention. And, mm -hmm. you know, opportunity makes a thief, you know, lock your doors, lock sure. your, you know, mm -hmm. so, you know, but, um, right. so, um, moving on, um, 
Uh, I just want to move on to what's a really sad situation. The community is mourning over the loss of a PV High teenager. Um, tell us about this, the tragic car accident that resulted in this untimely death of the 17-year-old um, PV High senior. It happened uh, on January 18th, last Friday night, actually, by a suspected drunk driver. What can you tell us about this case? Well, uh, you said it was a horrible, uh, horrible tragedy. Um, the, uh, the young man was um, standing near his vehicle and, uh, as you say, a suspected uh, uh, driver under the influence of, uh, of alcohol um, crashed into the, the vehicle. There were three cars parked there on Hawthorne and, uh, unfortunately, the young man lost his life. Um, the uh, suspected drunk driver has been arrested and we are aggressively uh, in investigating every aspect of this case right. to submit the strongest case we can uh, to the district attorney's office. Right. I know that the arrest of this, he was, a, he was an RPV resident, a 55-year-old, um, who was arrested. And, and to news reports, you know, it said failed a sobriety test. Um, so uh, then, of course, he was released on bail, and you are, you're investigating it. But what can you tell the community, certainly young, young people out there who look at this and say... You know, they just, they're just, everyone's devastated. Well, you know, it, it's, it is a horrible accident. Um, and uh, I, I tell you, you know, we, the, the one, um, you know, we oftentimes, you know, as the first responders, um, folks will look to us as if we're somehow um, calloused or immune to right. tragedy. And we're not. You know, I, I have talked to a couple of deputies uh, one deputy who was at the scene and another deputy at, at the uh, station here, both with tears in their eyes, recounting this ordeal. Um, you know, we're impacted. We're parents as well. And again, I guess the message would be for, for young and old alike, every day is precious. Value it. You know, hug your lo loved ones. And um, for you, you know, teenagers, um, Thank your parents. Mm -hmm. You know your parents uh, do so much for you, love you, and uh, you know that would be that would be one message. Right, and the fact that it appears alcohol might it was involved possibly um, with DUIs. What are you seeing the trends here on the hill if with alcohol related incidences? Well, fortunately, the um, alcohol related uh, drunk driving offenses are very low. And uh, that's good. And historically, they've been low. We're, in fact, we do not qualify for grant funding because the, our uh, statistics are too low, which is a positive thing. And certainly, um, you know, this points out, you know, the driver being much older. But uh, for you know, teenage drivers, those with uh, you know, just learning to drive, and those who are of drinking age, uh, you'll know, be very careful, be very cautious, because you, you see with the tragic turn of events here your whole life can change in a moment right. uh, when you get behind the wheel uh, after drinking. One last thing about this situation, this case, you said you're vigorously investigating it. When, what, when do you expect that we probably know more about really what took place and, and what's going to happen next with this case? Well, I would say in the, in the, uh, in the weeks ahead, we'll, um, you know, once there's a, uh, a filing with the district attorney and uh, the investigation proceeds, we'll, uh, uh, we'll know, uh, we'll be able to communicate more with um, how that has proceeded. All right, and of course our sympathies to the family and also again mm -hmm. to your deputies that respond there just again mm -hmm. to when you're, when you're dealing with something that's very difficult. Um, let's move back on now to the fact that you became captain here and uh, in the spring. So talk mm -hmm. about how you're doing and how well you're, you know, you're, how well you're staffed and just sort of your challenges now as captain here in Lameda. Well, uh, you know, the the sheriff promoted me April 1st. Okay. So, you know, uh, April Fool's Day. And so that's a, you know, uh, a milestone. In terms of staffing, we, uh, we have the same or similar number of personnel that we've had, uh, you know, in the recent past. No real change there. What has changed is the, uh, the responsibilities of our supervisors here. Every, save for one, Dave Rosas, who is our, our uh, um, core sergeant of and a, a reserve coordinator and you know, kind of wears many hats. He's the only supervisor that has remained since April 1st in the same spot he, that prior to. And um, you know, we've had new supervisors come in, but internally every 
key uh, supervisory position has changed. Our, we have a new operations lieutenant, new operations sergeant. Both of our detective sergeants have changed, our traffic sergeant and our training sergeant. So there was an adjustment period, but mm -hmm. uh, everybody has settled into their new roles, and uh, I'm confident and pleased with the direction we're heading. Uh, in terms of the sheriff's department's budget, uh, that has changed. We've, uh, we, uh, the department as a whole took a $128 million cut wow. uh, a few years back and since then we've lost tens of millions of other dollars of funding. So how that impacts us here at Lameda Station is there's no overtime budget to draw from. So in order to uh, keep the number of deputies out in the field that we need to, we've taken all of our administrative deputies and uh, detectives and put them in a patrol car one day a week. Okay, so say, how many patrol cars do we, are out there on the hill on a given day? I mean, you're patrolling not only just the peninsula, but also Lameda. Yeah, Lameda, and we also have a uh, small county area, about 9,000 residents, a uh, small portion on the hill is right. unincorporated, and then San Pedro, we have about 6,000 residents that we serve there. And on any given day, over a 24-hour period, you know, we're going to have, uh, you know, depending on the shift, uh, will dictate how many cars we have out there, and we also have uh, a couple of... Uh, traffic enforcement deputies, and a motor unit, which you wow. may, may have seen out there. Yeah. So overall, if you give a report card right now, um, you're coming up on a year to, you know, a, an A, a B, your <laughs> well, grade, grade your almost year here, would you? Uh, grade my, uh, yeah. uh, grade the experience here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this, I, I couldn't, uh, I, I tell you what, this has been an A plus. All right. Uh, and I'm, I'm not speaking of myself, I'm just speaking of the, the experience here. I couldn't uh, ask for a better command than Lameda Station. Uh, 27 years uh, on the department and I uh, got here in 2009 as the operations lieutenant for uh, Rowanda, who was the captain and now commander. And that was in 2009, spent uh, about two and a half years as the operations lieutenant and then fortunately was promoted. And I, I tell you, when I say A+, plus, um, the, the community here has been fantastic. Okay. The support we get from our city council members and from our uh, fantastic city managers, all very experienced. I know you, you know them. Yep. And <laughs> I, I, I rely on them all, you know, for uh, insight, input, and uh, direction. And, uh, I, like I said, I couldn't have envisioned landing anywhere better. Okay. And on that, when you say landing, I'm going to move on to my next question sure. because one of it involves sort of the landing of panga boats on our coast and mm -hmm. just some of the different crimes that you had to be involved with back over 2012. What were some of the big cases that your deputies, your team was working on that you know were able to solve and, and things that you still are trying to solve in terms of major cases um, in the last year or so? Well, well, you're right. Well, I'll start with the Panga boats. <laughs> They're, um, in effect, I don't know how familiar you are, you are with those boats, Liz. I wouldn't get in one of those if it was floating in a swimming pool. <laughs> but these things, you know, the, uh, they'll smuggle either narcotics or humans from south of the border, and they'll go out uh, due west about 100 miles, and then they'll uh, move north an, a, another couple of hundred miles in these makeshift Panga boats. We've been uh, very successful in, in recovering and seizing the uh, narcotics that have come up and also those uh, human uh, bodies that would attempt to land here on the peninsula. But and when I say we, it's law enforcement agencies, the federal agencies, and uh, you know, it's very difficult to land, to safely land around the peninsula because of the kelp forest that's thick, the jagged coastline. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say this also because of the diligence of law enforcement monitoring the air from the water and right. the Right, I just don't understand how they think they're not going to be seen coming into the RPV coast. I just don't get that. Well, you know, um, <laughs> exactly. But I think they've learned they are going to be seen. And right. they aren't going to be successful. They've learned that. And then also we know a couple of them have come in because of distress and just looking to get to land, we weren't necessarily the intended destination point. Mm -hmm. Right. So hopefully we won't see them showing up. Well, yeah, hopefully, but uh, we're, uh, we're, we're diligent, and like I said, uh, from the, uh, the air, the, in the water, and on the land. And other cases that we've had, um, I, I love to point out the, uh, the burglary spree that was happening last spring that our detectives just completely put an end to with the arrest of four gang members from Long Beach. Uh, we uh, not only did we solve many cases here on the peninsula, but that arrest of those four individuals solved crimes 
other locations throughout the county of Los Angeles. Fabulous. That was, uh, that was wonderful. And there were other such significant arrests that uh, put an end to, like with identity theft. We had a case in uh, Rolling Hills toward the end or, uh, latter part of the year in September where uh, about 50 some odd residents had their mail stolen. And uh, that turned into an identity theft investigation. An arrest has been made. That investigation continues as we speak, but mm -hmm. we're very uh, pleased with uh, that and, and the progression of that investigation thus far. In terms of... Uh, you had the holiday burglar. Well, we had the holiday burglar, the Grinch. The Grinch. And, uh, you know, it, it takes all kinds, I suppose. That individual has been arrested as well for stealing packages from porches, stealing mail, including Christmas cards and um, you know, re-gifting some of the items that were stolen to his family members. You mentioned identity theft. I mean, how can you prevent yourself becoming victimized by that? What, is there any tricks out there? I know we've had situations in my own family with credit cards, people taking our numbers. Sure, there's a number of things you can do. Uh, you know, first of all, is you, you want to make sure that the mail coming to you, whether it be packages that are dropped off and so forth, that they're uh, they're secured as quickly as possible. Also, your mail, you want to make sure that you're, you gather your mail, if possible, uh, from if it's from a street uh, mailbox or one that's uh, distinct from the, the, the home, you get that as quickly as possible so you reduce the likelihood of having somebody come around and steal the mail. Mm -hmm. You also want to make sure that you look at your statements, your billing statements. I, I'll tell you what, I've been as guilty as anybody of just casually looking at billing statements, cutting a check, send in the mail and be done with it. But uh, with the identity theft cases we've had here over the last year, you know, I take a, a more careful look and that's what we're asking residents to, to again, look with uh, a uh, critical eye at your billing statements to make sure that there's no unauthorized activity, nothing that jumps out at you. Mm -hmm. And then when you're done, make sure you shred your personal documents and uh, shred you know, uh, personal information that can't be taken from you and then used against you at a later time. Um, those would be the, uh, the key elements. Right, anything else that from 2012 that really sticks out in terms of you know, that was cases that your team's working on still trying to, to resolve? Uh, yes, in Rolling Hills, we had where we've had uh, what I uh, would call an anomaly in the, the crime spike. Uh, it's a relatively no, low number uh, when you, you look at it, but it's a significant occurrence in the city of Rolling Hills because uh, historically the, the crime rate has been low there. A number of burglaries where we just, um, though we gave and continue to give a valiant effort in investigating those burglaries, we haven't um, reached a conclusion in a, uh, a timeline that you know, we would, would have hoped for but it doesn't mean we don't continue investigating mm -hmm. those burglaries. And hope, we're hopeful that at some point there'll be a break in that uh, investigation that leads us to the apprehension of uh, the suspects. Yeah, one of the big headlines in 2012 was the story of a missing diver off the coast um, of our PV. Mm -hmm. um, are you still involved with that case? I mean, it started with you, your, your department, and then what happened there? And I know they recovered the body and all that, but I don't, that case is still ongoing. Yeah, that case is still ongoing, and that's being handled by our homicide uh, investigators, which they're uh, not a part of our station, you know, part of the sheriff's department, of course. But that, um, from what I'm aware, it just points to uh, you know a, a tragic accident right. at this point. Yeah, I don't know if they ever declared officially what happened with that situation. If it was. Uh, to my Determined, knowledge, that's, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. a final determination is, uh, has not been made okay. that I'm aware of. Okay. And then another incident that you were involved in and um, was involving this case of the, the vandalism at Peninsula. I just bring that up because I know the community is constantly trying to work on the rivalry between the mm -hmm. two schools. You have your core deputies like Dave Rose or something. They go out there and they work with the kids and the youth. So that there's some mm -hmm. message, there's you know, lessons learned from that situation as well. Talk about that case and I don't know if that if you're still investigating what happened there, if that's been resolved. Well, I think, I believe that that's been resolved, and it's been resolved uh, primarily at the district level. Okay. You know, the district has been fantastic in dealing with that, uh, that rivalry, longstanding, uh, <laughs> but there was, uh, you know, there, it was a little bit back and forth and, you know, kind of culminated with, uh, you know, the vandalism before a rivalry football game. The district has uh, met with, uh, you know, the district attorney and, uh, 
I believe, seeking restitution and other conditions on the students um, to meet in order to, uh, in lieu of, you know, criminal charges. Right. But uh, the district, again, acted swiftly, moved in, and, uh, you know, it's, it's our understanding that, you know, they've got a handle on it. Good. Maybe in that, now that we're talking about the youth in the community, um, you do work with youth here. You have a, a program that kids, if kids want to get involved in law enforcement, talk about that, and if kids are, are out there that are watching that are interested in, in this area. Sure. We're very proud of our Explorer program. Right. We, where we have kids from 14 through the age of 20. They can come and uh, they'll, they'll wear like uniforms. They'll go through an academy. Uh, it's an 18-week academy at our academy site in Whittier. And again, they're, they're taught uh, discipline. They're, uh, it's character building. And what we like to talk about our Explorer Post is, you know, besides us being the Explorer Post of the Year last year, oh, I, don't wanna, I, don't, I don't want to uh, uh, fail to mention that. And you know, that's in large part to Ruben Lopez. And Ruben Lopez is a household name here on the okay. peninsula. <laughs> and uh, but Ruben has really dedicated the, the better part of his career to our Explorer Post. And these kids, not only you do not have to be interested in becoming a police officer to join the post. We have former explorers. Uh, not only here at the station, but throughout the county who've gone on to start their own businesses, mm -hmm. have gone on to the legal field, have gone on to become, you know, pursue other interests, but the, the discipline and the regimentation and the life role skills. modeling and the life skills that they were able to take from the, the post, uh, invaluable with whatever endeavor that they've pursued. And again, many do join the department as deputy sheriffs and uh, they're very grateful and speak fondly of their time as explorers. So if you want to be an explorer, the best way is just contact, go on your website or to uh, just give you guys a call. Sure, just call the station and many times it's the parents that will call and you know, my, I hear about your explorer program, call the station and then we will direct you from there. Well, congratulations again for being honored for your program. That's terrific. Mm -hmm. Very pleased. Um, and I mentioned the website, so I'd like to move on to that. I was really mm -hmm. impressed you have a website, website that launched and it's uh, the best way. You said you can go right on the uh, LASD website to get there. www.lasd.org, O-R-G, okay. and that will take you to the Sheriff's Department's website. And from there, you can go to and find the web page for every unit on our department, including Lomita Station. And on our particular site, we have uh, uh, safety tips, information that uh, you can uh, just about everything Sheriff's Department related, you know, what to do if you get a traffic ticket, how you can become a, an explorer, how you can join our volunteer post, and also see crime statistics. Right, you can see a lot of things on there. Great, it's a, a great website. You talk about programs that you um, offer. Is there any pr programs that you're, like we mentioned, the Explorers for the Youngsters that you want um, the community to know about if they want to get involved and mm -hmm. volunteer with you? Well, we have a thriving volunteer program, 63 to, as of today, and our volunteers, with, of those 63, they uh, give us about 2,000 hours a month. Wow. They're the unsung heroes of Lomita Station, and you know, they're able to enhance the service we provide to the community. And I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. We have volunteers who dress in white uh, tops and blue slacks. They uh, work at our front counter and they greet the public as they come in. So the public uh, you know, is, is greeted right away by an actual body without delay, and that's been uh, immeasurable, the uh, value to the station. And that's one of my goals as well, is to go ahead and to have uh, that staffed at the front counter uh, pretty much from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., seven days a week. Right now, we're doing a good job of staffing that uh, Monday through Friday. And again, as with the Explorer post, go to our website or call the station and uh, ask to be a volunteer, and we'll, we'll take you from there. And so in terms of, you, do you get, they must, volunteers are trained, obviously, on how to do what they do here. And yes, they are. There's a, there's a training uh, program that goes with that, depending on what you uh, would like to do. We have a number of uh, ways in which they can help us, whether it's filing with detectives, whether it's going out in a volunteer on patrol car, mm -hmm. those white vehicles those that do great. vacation checks. Yeah, I know the community sees we them on a regular those. basis. Yeah, they're fabulous. absolutely, yes, they're, they're wonderful. And you know, we, uh, they're, they recruit themselves because uh, other folks will see them out in the community. Hey, how can I be a part of this? Right. And, they'll and when you mentioned that, if they're for our residents watching, the way the service works is if you are going to be away for some time, they can contact you, and then the volunteers on patrol will come by and just take a look and make sure. Is that how that works? That's exactly how it works. Excellent. 
Um, we're in 2013, and uh, we got about two minutes left, so I had more. We can through this the next show, but just sort of your goals for the for the year as we're coming into you know as now that we're in 2013. Well, you know, we're in law enforcement. We're often our success is measured by our crime rate and crime statistics, and so we always want to be better than the year before mm -hmm. and improve upon that. So you know, we've got our work cut out for us, and but we're up to the challenge, I believe, with uh, as we head into 2013. Uh, one of the other things is we want to improve uh, our relationship with the community and our outreach with our patrol deputies. Uh, typically deputies would only be viewed as driving up and down the street or, and responding to calls for service, but we want them out of their cars more. We want them interacting with the community at events and functions right. like National Night Out. Back in August, we had deputies, we assigned every deputy working that night along with myself, Sergeant Rosas, and a few other supervisors, and we hit all of the neighborhood gatherings. And not only did the community appreciate that and get to see and interact with the, the area cars on a, uh, on a less formal, less uh, official basis, but the deputies right. loved it. Deputy Knox is fantastic, and he was out there at National Night Out as well. Great, great. Well, um, it was wonderful being here. We appreciate your time and all the work you're doing for our community to keep us safe. I'm Liz Brown Swanson here with Captain Blaine Bolin. Thank you for joining us here on RPV City Talk. See you next time. <laughs>